What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sealy Strategics. In today's episode, we're going to be going over rifle basics. A novice getting into the world of rifles, there's some things that you need to know. A new shooter, a new rifle shooter needs to know if you're not already tracking before this jump into the world of rifles. That is today's topic. So like I tell people all the time, before you purchase any firearms, whether it's a pistol or rifle, you got to have a purpose. What is the purpose of this firearm? Why do I want this rifle? What am I going to be doing with this rifle? Are you just getting this rifle just to go to the range on the weekends and just to let off some steam? Are you actually trying to train with this rifle? Is the rifle going to be for personal defense, for self-defense, home defense? Is it going to be a truck gun? Is it going to be a bedside gun? Or is it just going to be a safe queen? You're just going to build it up to look pretty and never really shoot it. What are you going to be using this rifle for is the question you need to ask yourself. So before we even jump into the meat and potatoes of this episode, there's some things you need to know about rifles. There's a difference between actual AR-15 rifles and AR-15 pistols. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? What is an AR-15 rifle? An AR-15 rifle would be something like this. This have a 16 inch barrel, it has a stock on it, a cog. This rifle setup is made for long distance shooting. This is a rifle, the barrel length is 16 inches or more. This is an AR pistol because the barrel is less than 16 inches. This is considered an AR-15 pistol. It looks just like an AR-15 rifle. It's the same exact thing. The only difference is it has a shorter barrel. This is considered a pistol, an AR pistol. My 300 blackout. This have an 8 inch barrel, a suppressor on here. With the barrel and suppressor, this is 14 inches. So this is still considered an AR pistol. Even with the suppressor, this is an AR pistol. What is a SBR? A short barrel rifle. <laughs> so, according to the ATF, this is considered an AR pistol in the state that it's in right now. If I was to take this foregrip and put this foregrip and attach it, according to the ATF, this now becomes a short barrel rifle because of the grip. Just because of the grip. If I take this off, it's an AR pistol. If I put this on, it's a short barrel rifle. Another thing that the ATS states, this is considered a pistol brace because the bottom part open up and you're supposed to put this brace over your hand and you're supposed to shoot this pistol with one arm. This pistol is made to be shot with one arm. You strap this up to your arm. That's the whole reason why you got this brace. You put it on there, it's a pistol brace, you strap it and you're supposed to shoot this weapon like this. Now, do we shoot these pistols, rifles like this? I mean, for the AT for ATF purposes, yeah, we shoot it with one hand. That's how we shoot our pistol. We shoot we shoot all our air pistols with one hand because we don't have stocks on it and we don't have four grips on it. So we shoot our pistols like Rambo. <laughs> That's how we shoot our AR-15 pistols because we can't have stocks on them and we can't have four grips. Just so you understand, the difference between an AR-15 rifle is it's a rifle if it have a barrel of 16 inches or more. You can put a stock on it. You can put a regular AR-15 M4 stock on it. This is a stock. It's a solid stock. It's not a brace. This is considered a rifle. This, on the other hand, is considered a pistol. So because it's considered an AR pistol, it has a barrel length of 16 inches or less, I can't put a stock like I did on my other rifle on this one. The minute I put a stock on this, according to the ATF, this now becomes a short barrel rifle. <laughs> What's the difference? ATF, you gotta ask ATF, I have no idea. So if I put a stock on this, this becomes a short barrel rifle, and if I put a foregrip on this, this is a short barrel rifle. The way how I have this rifle set up right now, it's in pistol format, so I don't have to register it, I don't have to pay a tax stamp, I don't have to register it. But the minute I put a stock, 
If I take that stock off of this rifle, if I take the stock off of this rifle and put it in this rifle, I now have a short barrel rifle and I have to register my rifle and get permission to travel. I have to register this. I have to let authorities know I have a short barrel rifle. I'm about to cross state lines. But the way how this rifle is set up right now, with no forward grip and no stock, this is the pistol. I could go across any state lines with it. No problem with the federal government because this is an AR pistol. Understand the rifle and ATF rules and laws about what makes a, a, a AR-15 a pistol and what makes it a rifle. If I put a stock on this, this is no longer a pistol and this magically becomes an SBR and it's no longer a pistol. So I don't understand the logic, but that's just the laws that we live in. And those are some things that you have to understand when you're jumping into the world of rifles. It's so much confusion. It's so much things to the equation. If you take this stock off of this rifle and put it on this rifle, this rifle is no longer a pistol. It's now considered a rifle. If you notice, I call all AR-15 rifles, even this pistol cal caliber carbon right here this is a 5.7 so this is considered a pistol caliber carbon because it shoots pistol caliber rounds the CM, for the CMMG Banshee you can get this in 9mm 10mm 45s 40 cals think now they're making them in 5.56 uh, this is considered a pistol caliber carbon because it fires pistol rounds 5.7 times 28 is a pistol round so this is considered a pistol caliber carbon because it shoots pistol rounds but in an AR-15 platform if I slap a foregrip on here and put a stock it now changes from a carbine pistol, a short barrel rifle. It's just a bunch of craziness. So it, it's super confusing. I don't want to confuse you guys. Just understand that this is a 10 inch barrel right here. So if you get a 10 inch barrel pistol, if you put a stock on it, this now becomes illegal. You know, and you have to register it as a short barrel rifle. For those of you asking, this is a hand stop. You can't put a foregrip on there. This is, I don't understand why having a foregrip all of a sudden magically makes this a more deadly short barrel rifle than if you don't have it. Understand the legal jargon and all the legal mumble jumbo that the ATF put out there. They're always changing their minds. One minute this is legal, the next minute it's not legal. So it's just all the craziness that we have to do with in the gun world. So now that you have the purpose of your weapon so as you see I have different type rifles for different type scenarios for different type situations for example this right here this CMMG Banshee in 5.7 caliber this is considered a PDW, a personal defense weapon. This is a weapon that you take, it's real kind of small and compact, so you can stick this in a backpack, you can have this in a car set up. Let's say you're a contractor or a bodyguard and you do a personal protection of people and you want you want to be able to have the firepower of a, a rifle caliber type. You can get this in any caliber that you choose basically, but if you want a pistol caliber carbine, it's a pistol round but in a carbine setup so you can be so you can shoot further and just have more firepower on you. This is what I consider my trial gun personal defense type weapon this is the go-to right here so this is my PDW, my personal defense weapon. This is also considered a backpack gun or a truck gun. This is one setup that you can have, a PDW, a personal defense weapon, AKA a backpack gun, truck gun, bed gun, whatever. The next rifle is what you call a tactical range gun or CQB gun, a close quarters battle type gun that you're gonna be taking to the range. You're gonna be running your tactical drills. You're gonna be doing all types of cool tactical drills and shooting on the move and stuff like that. It's called a range gun, CQB, close quarter battle type gun. This is in 5.56. It's empty. This is my tactical range gun. This is what I run when I'm shooting a lot of drills, when I'm doing CQB type tactical, tactical type drills or whatever. This is a setup that I carry. I'm not gonna go too much into detail about what I have. This is what you consider your tactical range gun. This is what I use when I'm do, doing more tactical type drills, tactical type shooting. This is that type of setup right here. All right, so the next type of setup is what you call a home defense setup. This will be considered my home defense rifle setup. It's a 300 blackout. It has an eight inch barrel, seven inch suppressor on there. Total length is about 14 to 15 inches, barrel length or whatever. This is what some people consider a home defense or a bedside gun for self-defense, personal defense, for protecting your home and property. The suppressor is on there, so it's not so loud. You're not gonna be blown out your family members' ears. A lot of people have different feelings and thoughts about running a home defense gun with a suppressor. Some people say you want it as loud as possible to deter people which is true but at the end of the day even with a suppressor you shoot this in a house it's still gonna be pretty loud it's not gonna be as loud it's still gonna be pretty loud the bad guy's gonna hear this in the middle of the night even with a suppressor it's a more stealth looking a more mean looking type setup all right and the other type of setup that you have this is a long distance type setup this is like a varmint hunting type setup as you can see I spray painted this to, to just blend in with the foliage you know I try to have it set up where it's gonna Hey, what's up, baby? Hello? Hey, baby. What's up, mama?
All right, so this setup right here, this is what you consider a hunting type gun, a varmint gun. You know, this is what you take hunting. It has a bipod up front so you can get a nice stable shot. This is more for long distance type shooting. This is what they set up for. I have an ACOG so I can reach out there for a pretty decent distance. It has a stock 16 inch barrel. This is a long range setup gun, pretty big stock on there so you can get a nice grip so you can just do what you gotta do. So now that you have an idea of what you want your rifle for, why you're buying your rifle, what, what's it going to be for, what's the main purpose, home defense, self-defense, range toy, or search something to just go out and train with, you have to think about weight. You don't want to add too much craziness to your rifle to make it super heavy. This right here, if you're running just a range training type setup, this is a good minimal setup that you can have. Pop up iron sights. have my SIG 7 red dot. This red dot is a tank by the way. I love SIG optics. I, I say this multiple times. The Romeo 7 is a tank. Trust me, believe me. If you don't believe me, go get one and run it into the ground, torture test it, and you'll see this is a good red dot setup right here. You want to have a good set of irons. You want to make sure you have backup iron sights. So just in case something happened to your optic, you can just flip your iron sights up and you can use your iron sights and you can still shoot your gun. Don't make any sense to run a rifle with no backup iron sights. The red dot goes down and gets shot or something. The battery dies and now you can't really aim and shoot so you want to make sure that you have flip up iron sights another thing that i like about the romeo 7 on this setup it has a quick detach mount so let's say something happens to the red dot it breaks the battery dies it gets shot i can literally just flip this off toss the red dot and i can just use my iron sights like i said this is my tactical range setup right here my range gun i shoot a lot of round shooters i do a lot of training with this it's a pretty basic minimal setup i just have my sling a red dot bag up iron sights and a light and that's it and a bad lever to help me with faster reloads and clearing the weapon and stuff like that like i said you don't want to add too much tactical accessories to your rifle because the more stuff you put on the rifle the more weight you're gonna have in your rifle and you gotta lug that thing around and you gotta hold that thing up and at the end of the day you got all these accessories on there you're gonna be shaking like booty meat shaking like booty meat booty booty meat trying to hold that rifle up so don't over accessorize your rifle think about stealth think about weight when you're setting up your rifle you want to make it as light as possible you want to put as minimal stuff as you need on there a red dot a weapon light backup sights are definitely things that you need that you must have i beat this thing up in the range i just shoot a lot cqb type drills that's what this rifle is set up for it's not that heavy i could shoot this with one hand if i want to like i'm supposed to i always know i take that back i shoot this with one hand all the time that's how i shoot all my rifles with one hand and yeah so no matter what your rifle setup is, you want to make sure that you have your rifle set up for you, for your body, for your arm length, for your shoulder length, just the way how your arms are. You, you want to set your rifle up for your body type and for your body structure. One of the big things that a lot of people mess up on, they don't have their stock brace set up properly for them. Some people run their stocks all the way in. The stock in this one is all the way in, but it also has the Sylvan Arms folding stock, which adds about an inch, inch and a half. This setup right here with the stock adapter, it's a perfect setup for my hand. What you want to do when you set up your rifles to make sure that the stock or the brace is to the proper distance to your body type. So what you want to do, you want to put your, you want to flex your muscles. You want to put your rifle in your flex arm and you want to make sure the distance of the brace and the grip is a perfect fit in this pocket right here. The brace is touching my bicep right here and you see I have a good proper grip on the gun. That distance right there is a perfect distance that this brace needs to be out for my body type, for my body structure. I'm going to show you with the CMMG Banshee what I'm talking about. All right, so we got the CMMG Banshee right here. This brace is pushed all the way in. So you can see this gap right here. A lot of people, I see this in the military all the time. I see soldiers all the time do this. They have their stock brace all the way closed in because it's just, it's more compact. You know, when you have your sling on it, 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 it makes the rifle ride higher. And this is how they have their rifle set up and it's not set up properly. So when you see them shooting, they go to get their stance, their brace is folded all the way in. They're shooting this, they're shooting their rifles, their service rifles, like it's an MP5 because they got the brace fold it all the way in what you want to do to have a proper distance so you don't have this going on you're all bunched up and uncomfortable like you're shooting an mp5 so you want to make sure that you have the brace stock extended out to fit your arm i'm going to go ahead and pull this out and you see right here at the furthest point of this brace being out is the exact same place that it fits for my 300 blackout so you see it's the same thing i have the same exact grip they both are in the same position that's the distance that you want your stock out your stock or brace out of your rifles so you can shoot comfortably and have a good firm grip so whenever i deploy this weapon i have it stored i literally close it pull the stock out the brace out i'm ready to go that's one of the things that you have to learn about your rifle. You have to learn what distance of the stock being out is going to be comfortable for you. This just happens to be set up with the Sylvan Arm stock adapter also. It set up perfectly when it's all the way out so I don't have to guess. I literally just 
rip the stock out and I know it's gonna be in the position to fit me. And that's another thing I like about the CMMG rip stock. You literally just pull it out. So you're gonna hear me calling it stock because I'm used to saying stock. It's a brace, but it's a stock, brace, stock, whatever you wanna call it. Quick deploy on target. Now that you got your brace in the right position, your stock in the right position to fit your forearm, you know it's going to be a good fit. It just rolls into your shoulder. Once you get your stock set up, your bunch set up, the next thing that you need to worry about for your rifle is a good sling. You want to have a good sling. I have my Magpul sling set up. I'm just put this off to the side right here. You want to have a good sling. It's at the shortest point right now. So if you're using this weapon on the range, or if you have to use this weapon in self-defense, you got your sling. If I need to make it bigger, I literally just pull it back, I can maneuver in and out. So slings are super important. You want to have a good sling that's going to last, it's not going to be all wobbly, it's going to be pretty firm and sturdy. The purpose of the sling is you don't want to have to be carrying your weapon in your hand like this all day, lugging around your weapon. You're going to see people out there like, whew! When you have to carry your weapon around without a sling, that's when you see people start carrying a weapon like they're not supposed to. They're no longer going to be in the low ready, they're no longer going to be carrying in the high ready, they're just going to be carrying like this. People grabbing their rifle like this. See some people just carrying it like this. In the army, you see people carrying it by the damn muzzle all the time, just... Hey, hey, how's it going? What's going on, man? You straight? You good? You want to have a good brace, so when you're carrying your rifle around, you're lugging your rifle around, you're not tired. It gets tiring carrying this thing around in your hands like this all day. There's times when I carry my weapon like this, and my forearm was all cramping, my bicep was all cramping, my wrist was all cramping, I hurt and just carrying this weapon. So you want to have a good sling, so you can just, when you're done shooting, you're doing whatever you gotta do, you just drop it to your body, and you're good, your hands free, you can draw your weapon, you can do a reload real quick. It's just real convenient to have a sling. Trust me, if you ever carry a rifle for a couple hours, you're gonna love this sling. I promise you. So get your good sling. It's one of the first things that you should buy for your rifle is a good rifle sling. So once you got your rifle set up, you got your sling, you got your brace, now you have to start training. I suggest you start dry firing and playing with your rifles at the house before you even get to the range and before you even get live ammo. So you put live ammo into the, the weapon. Just extend this just a little bit. So you want to start working on your grip. The same as pistols, when you grab your rifle, every time you want to make sure you get a nice high grip. You want to make sure you get your hand up in that crack right there and get a good high grip. That's one of the first things that you have to make sure you get it every time you grip your rifle you want to grip it the exact same way every single time you want to get that good high purchase that good high grips drop your weapon get that grip drop your weapon you get that grip once you get a good grip on your shooting hand, you can make sure you get that nice good grip. You want to make sure you get a nice C-clamp grip. The grip that I like to use, it depends on which rifle I run. Sometimes I'll do it like this. It depends on the setup, like the 300 Blackout. A lot of the times, because how I have it set up, since I have the light on the left side in the Banshee, when I'm gripping this, a lot of the times, I do it like this. I put my thumb under the light, and I'm grabbing it. Grab and that's how I got this hand stop right here. These fingers right here, and I just literally grip it like that. And that's how I shoot this weapon. That's how I grip this one. It's an undercut type grip. I don't know what the technical name that they call it, but it's literally how I grip it. See from this side? I'm literally just gripping. I have a good stable grip because the foregrip is in between my fingers. So I'm pressing that up into my shoulder. I'm taking this thumb, and I'm pulling on this little light lock right here. This little lock. And I literally just grip that, and that gives me a good sturdy grip. This pistol, it's not going anywhere. It's planted into my shoulder. All right, so once you work in your grip, you got your grip, you got your good high grip. Now your support hand. I have this hand stop set up perfectly for my support hand. There's no guessing, no having to wonder where I'm going to put my support hand. My support hand knows exactly where it's going to go. My hand just goes automatically into that setup. For this rifle setup, since I can actually grab it, grab it and hold. Well, I go with the little C clamp type grip. The C grip right here. For the Banshee, I do the half grip because just the way how the light is set up, I could put my hand over it, but as you can see, my thumb is like it's awkward and I don't have like a really that good of a grip because of my hand, like a lot of my hand is off the rail because of the light, the way how the light is set up. That's why I just put my hand, if I just put my thumb down this way, my whole palm of my hand is actually gripping the bottom of the rail. So even though it's not over it like that, like the C, I'm still getting a good grip and I have better control of it like this. But with this rifle, since the light is on the right side, I can get that good C grip. My grip is completely around the rail and you can see you have a good nice grip you gonna drop this hand and what you're doing with your support hand once you get that good grip on the rail system you're pulling the rifle into your shoulder a good way to know that you have a good grip and a good stance with your rifle is when you take your arm and you put your arm out there's a little pocket right here there's a little crack in your shoulder right here so you're gonna put your arm down you put your hand up and you feel that little pocket that's the pocket that you're gonna put your, your rifle in every single time. So every time, no matter if I put the sling, if I put it down and I let it hang in the sling, when I get it, it goes right into that pocket. It goes right into that pocket the exact same way every single time. 
And like I said, I'm getting a high grip with my trigger hand. My support hand is getting that nice firm grip and I'm pulling it into me. And it's pulling into me. Every single time. Do it again. This direction. Every single time I'm getting that grip. The same exact grip. I'm getting the same exact grip every single time. And you train and you train and it's gonna come second nature. So now that you got your grip down, you're mastering the grip, you're working on your ready up drills. You get your grip every single time. Now, some of the things that you want to work on is you want to work on your stance. Just like the pistol, you want to have a nice fighting stance. I have my left foot in front of my right foot. I have my right foot back. It's about right under my shoulder, so I have that weight. And what you want to do with your rifle, just like you're fighting, you're going to get up in a good fighting stance. And when you're shooting the rifle, you want to just lean forward. You don't want your torso, your shoulders to go past your feet. Your left shoulder to be kind of like right above or a little bit behind your left foot. So this is what it's going to look like. You're going to you get your nice fighting stance, shoulder width apart. You you lean and you lean into your rifle in my rifle my grip and you lean forward and this is how you want to shoot your rifle you're just going to lean forward just a little bit you're leaning into it and what you're doing when you're leaning into it is that's going to help you control the rifle more that's going to help you control the recoil so when you're shooting and it's like kicking into you you're not you're going to be more solid it's going to be more solid you have a solid base so when the rifle kick you're going to be solid and it's not going to be able to move you now if you just stand up like this you just stand up all willy-nilly with your feet together your shoulders back and you shoot this rifle and it kicks you see just doing that alone i got off balance like i'm literally off balance just doing that just doing that alone i'm off balance just just kicking that <laughs> like you see how much you're rocking back and forth just by doing that once you get a good stance make sure that you place that stock into your shoulder if it kicks you're not moving see that you see the difference I'm pushing it's hurting I'm, I'm jabbing the shit out of my shoulder but I'm not moving because you have a good stance you're leaning forward that's gonna help you control the recoil better it's gonna help you control the rifle better you're gonna get better and more accurate shots All right, so questions that I get all the time because a lot of people see competitive shooters and when you look at competitive shooters in the shooting competition you see that their hand is completely locked up and a lot of people ask me well that's how you're supposed to shoot if you're a competitive shooter yeah you, you train like that you shoot like that but in the real world you're not gonna lock out your arms like that that's 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 gonna get tiring especially if you're running drills all day you're doing tactical movements and stuff like that locking your elbows out is gonna be super uncomfortable you're gonna get tired you're gonna get burnt off faster so you don't want your arm locked out you don't want your arm locked out when you're holding your rifle you don't want it locked out like that that's gonna be uncomfortable after a while when you lock your support hand elbow out and you get that kick it's gonna it's gonna just move you a little bit more so what you want to do, you want to have a little bit, of, you want to have a little bit of bend in your support hand. So that way, that's going to help you control, control the recoil and control the rifle better than if you lock your hand out. When you think about competitive shooters, their rifle is set up to be fast and to have low recoil. A competitive rifle and this rifle is completely different rifles. It could be the same caliber, but it's set up where it's faster and it's a lot less movement and a lot less recoil. The competitive shooters can lock their hand out because they don't have a lot of recoil to deal with. When you're dealing with 5.56, five, 300 blackouts, it's a lot more recoil coming at you. And just the way how the rifle is set up, it's not set up for you to lock your hands out. It's gonna be kicking you and you're gonna have a harder time controlling it. You're gonna control the rifle easier if you just have a little bend in your hand, a little bend. It also depends on the size of your rifle. This rifle, I'm gonna have more of a bend in not only my shooting arm, but also my support arm because it's super short. It's right here. So this is how much bend I'm gonna have in this rifle because it's a shorter rifle. For my range rifle, with the CMMG bench, it's about right here. And for this one, it's about right here. So this is about the normal bend angle that you want. You don't want to go into total lockout because, like I said, you're going to get burnt out faster. <laughs> you're going to get fatigued faster. And it's just going to help you control the recoil a lot better when you have the little bend in your arm. Okay, so one of the last things we're going to talk about today is your head position while shooting your rifle. I've seen some professional shooters, some ex-Navy SEALs and ex-Ranger dudes. I've seen some of them, I'm not going to call anybody's name out specifically. I see them teach their students, the people that go to their classes, that just like a pistol, when you draw your pistol, you're not leaning your head down into it. I did a video about that. When you're shooting a pistol, you keep your head up and you bring your pistol up to your eyes. You bring the optics up to your eyes. You don't lean your head, you don't tilt your head. You're gonna have a little bit of lean just because of your stance, you lean into your pistol. So you're gonna have a, your head down a little bit because you're bringing your gun up to your eyes. So you're gonna duck your head down a little bit just so you can get that. But you're not tilting your head. You're not doing this and you're not doing none of this. You know, you're just gonna get your gun up and present your weapon. The same concept applies for rifles, but for rifles, because it's a different setup, it's bigger, you're gonna 
tilt your head a little bit when you present your weapon. I've seen some instructors tell the students that the same thing. Just like a pistol, you don't bring your head down, you bring the rifle up to you. So when you do that, then in order for me to see this optic, this is where it has to be. Remember what I told you earlier about getting the butt of your stock brace into your pocket or your shoulder. This, to me, this I'm trying to... Let me change weapons so you can... I want you guys to see this without the sling. I mean, it has the sling on there. To me, this is how I control this rifle better. You notice the rifle is in line with my shoulder blade right here. It's, it's perfectly in line. It's not above. It's not low like this. It's not up here. I see this instructor tell the students that when you're presenting your rifle, it's the same thing. So if I bring this optic up to my sight, look at where the butt is if I don't move my head. Look at look at where it's at. It's a little bit higher. It's not that bad for me. I have a shorter neck. <laughs> the way how I'm built is not that bad. If I was to shoot this rifle like this, this point right here, after two magazines, three magazines, or 30 round magazines, this is gonna be kicking, this is gonna be poking the shit out on my shoulder. That's gonna hurt after a while. After a while, that's just gonna hurt. This, this, my whole shoulder is gonna be tender after shooting like that. The instructor is saying is that the same concept with pistols, you wanna keep your head up so you can have better situation awareness. I understand that, but rifles are a little bit different. It's a bigger weapon. I believe, this is just me, I'm not no professional. I just believe when you bring your rifle up, you wanna bring your head down. You wanna make sure that you have four points of contact. Your first point of contact is your grip, is your, is your shooting hand. Your trigger hand. The second point of contact is your foregrip. The third point of contact is going to be in your shoulder brace. And your fourth point of contact is going to be your cheek. The cheek on that stock, what that does is when you get that rifle in there, you're sucking it in there. This rifle is not going anywhere. This stock is not going anywhere because not only is it locked in my shoulder blades, this arm is pulling it into my shoulder. Now my cheek is locking it and it's not going anywhere. I can shoot this all day. And this is not moving. It's not going anywhere. For rifles, I believe, it's just me. Like I said, you could take my word for whatever it is. You bring the rifle up, you put it into your shoulder, and you put that cheek, and you just lean your head down. You just rest your cheek onto that, that stop or brace or whatever you're running, and you just go to town. This is going to give you more control. The more contact, the more body contact you have to this rifle, the more you're going to be able to control it, the less movements it's going to have. If I shoot this rifle with one hand, it's going to be all over the place. Now, if I shoot this rifle like this, it's going to be a little bit better, but still all over the place. When I pull this rifle here into my shoulder, no, it's not going anywhere. It's pretty solid for sure. It's not going anywhere. Once I put my cheek down on it, it's locked in, baby. It's not going anywhere. It's locked in. It ain't going anywhere. It's locked in. You can shoot, move, and it's too easy to bring your head up. If you're on target, bang, 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 you're shooting, it's too easy to just bring your head up. You look around, do your thing, do your movements, signal, get back on target. Signal your guys, go to the wedge, get back on target. It's too easy to just lift your head up for two seconds, check check your surroundings, make sure you're good, get back on target. It's too easy. From the high ready, you're looking around, you're doing your thing, get back on target. From the low ready, you're doing movements, bang, bang, somebody starts shooting, bring it up. It's too easy. It's just too easy. It's not that hard. Literally just, once you train after a while, it just becomes second nature. Once you bring that weapon up to rock, boom. Bring in the trigger, you're good. If you need to signal to your teammates, you bring your head up, tell them to hold, go into the wedge, do whatever signals you gotta do. Boom, boom, get back on target, do what you gotta do. All right, so these are just my tips and tricks. This is just my video to introduction to rifles for beginners. I'm not gonna go too much in depth into the more tactical aspect. This is just the basics that you should be working on after you buy your first rifle, your first AR-15, your first AR pistol, things that you wanna train on with your rifle. These are things that you can work on while you're working on dry fire when you first get your rifle before you even go to the range and shoot. You work on the basic fundamentals from the house. Every when you get to the range, you can focus on shooting and getting better and better and better. And that's the name of the game. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. And stay tuned for the next video. Peace.